morning class. This is Leonard Smith. Our lesson for today is English Bible translations. Before we get started, let's have a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer. We give you thanks and praise for the opportunity to be together to help us learn to read your word and interpret it. Help us, Lord, today as we take on the subject of English Bible translations. Guide us and direct us, Lord. Help each one in our class, Lord, to look to you for your guidance and your help in these days. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, our lesson for today is about English translations of the Bible. Which one is best for me? Well, the Bible was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Koine Greek. I wonder how many of you in the class can read Hebrew? Huh? Probably no one. How many of you in the class can read Aramaic? Probably no one. How many of you can read Koine Greek? Well, there might be one or two, but mostly you'll say no. So, you see the need then for an English translation. Early English translations. Now, you might be surprised to learn that the King James Version of the Bible was not the first English version of the Bible. What is the earliest English translation of the Bible? Well, the Tyndale Bible, generally referring to the body of biblical translations made by William Tyndale between the years of 1494 and 1536. Tyndale's Bible is credited the, uh, with being the first English translation to work directly from the Hebrew and Greek texts. The Geneva Bible, written about 1560, the Geneva Bible is one of the most historically significant translations of the Bible in English. This preceded the King James Version by 51 years. It was translated from the Hebrew and Greek text. Some more English translations of the Bible. The Bishop's Bible is an English translation of the Bible which was produced under the authority of the established Church of England in 1568. It was substantially revised in 1572 and in 1602. That edition was prescribed as the base text for the King James Bible that was completed in 1611. Of course, the King James Bible, 1611, I think most people are at least familiar with that version. It's also known as the authorized version, because it was authorized to be translated by King James I of England. It began to be translated in 1604 and finished in 1611. Well, how many different translations into English of the Bible exist today? If you took a guess, I wonder what your guess would be. I imagine there are several different versions in our class today. Those who are in the class, I bet you might even have two or three versions of the Bible in your household. I would imagine you have, for example, a copy of the King James Version, maybe a copy of the New King James Version, maybe a copy of the New International Version, maybe the American Standard Version. You might have those in your home today. 
Let's name the ones you had today. If you were here in class and able to tell me which versions you have, I imagine we'd find a bunch of them, wouldn't we? Maybe 10 or 11 different versions. Well, how about the English translations since 1611? That's since the King James Version. The King James Version was revised in 1769. The ERV in 1881 to 1885, it used a different Greek text to translate than was used by the King James Version. The King James Version, you know, was used, they used the Textus Receptus. In 1901, the ERV was revised by the Americans. The American Standard Version came along about the middle of the 20th century. The Revised Standard Version came along in 1946 to 1952. The New American Standard Version came along in 1971 and again in 1995. The New King James Version came along in 1979 1982, and they were trying to update the King James language, the thee, thou, and so forth. But they still were using the Texas Receptus Greek manuscript, as did the original King James Version. Other translators are using the Electic Greek text, which is actually older than the King James uh, Texas Receptus version, but it wasn't discovered until later. You may have heard about Catholic translations of the Bible. The Catholic Church only allowed their translators to translate the Bible from the Latin Vulgate up until the year 1943. Since then, they allow the translators to translate from the Hebrew and Greek text. Well, how many versions into English are available today? If you would take a guess, how many versions would you think are available? 15 or 20? Well, if you guess that many, you'd be wrong. There are a whole lot more than that available. At least 40 different English translations of the Bible are available today. We're going to take a look at John 3.16 in different translations in a few minutes. Well, what are the different purposes of the translators? The Good News Bible that came out in 1976 tried to express the meaning of the original writers in conversational English. Some translators try to translate the Bible word for word from the original text. The NIV tried to produce a translation in the middle of the road between word for word and express meaning. Two approaches to translating the Bible. The formal approach tries to stay as close as possible to the structure and the words of the original language. This sometimes proves to be a bit awkward. Many different languages do the structure a little bit different. I know I studied Spanish and I found that in, Spanish, in English, there's a noun, and there's an adjective, and the adjective usually comes before the noun. However, in Spanish, the adjective usually comes after the noun, that it helps and tell us about. So the different languages, if you take the formal approach, word for word, it would become a bit 
high tech, awkward. The second approach is the more functional approach. This tries to express the meaning of the text in today's English. Remember I mentioned the NIV tries to go in the middle of the road between those two approaches. You may have heard of paraphrases of the Bible. Paraphrased Bibles try to give the meaning in English without a true translation. So they give the meaning according to the translator of the text. However, paraphrases are usually done by one person instead of a committee of experts. The Living Bible and its new revision the New Living Translation is an example of a paraphrased Bible. Read them for fun, for relaxation, but realize they're not real translations. There is another approach. Another approach is the Amplified Bible that came out between the years of 1958 and 1965. This approach tries to give the reader an understanding of the text through amplification. Here's an example. John 11:25. Jesus said to her, I am, in brackets, myself, the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on, me, although he may die, yet shall he live. The Amplified Bible, however, leaves the misleading impression that you may choose any option that's presented. Well, how are we then going to choose a translation for ourselves? Here, the authors of our text give us several ideas. One, choose a translation that uses modern English. Two, choose a translation that is based on the standard Hebrew and Greek text. Three, choose a translation made by a committee, not by an individual. Some suggestions are the New American Standard Bible, the new NIV, the English Standard Version. Okay, we mentioned looking at John 3.16 in different translations. If I had a handout to give to you in a classroom situation at this point, I would say let's pass out the handout. However, since we're probably not in the classroom at this moment, go to this address where you can see John 3.16 in many different English versions, at least 20 or 30 different versions. Here's the address. Now copy it down, get out a piece of paper and a pen, write down this address. Be careful to write it carefully https called slash slash biblehub dot com slash j o h n slash three dash sixteen dot htm did you copy it down yet make sure you copy this address down you can go to that address and you'll see all these different versions of the English Bible, how they translated John 3.16. Okay, here's your assignment for next week. Read chapter 8 in your textbook. That chapter will go more in depth about meaning and application, personal application.